All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, good to see you all again here on the Zoom. I um, want to start by, by thanking our players um, for their hard work this season. Uh, I'd like to thank Luke um, and his staff. Um, thank our performance health staff who had an extremely challenging year, uh, especially with the COVID protocols. Um, and, uh, and thank my staff and the rest of basketball operations um, for the work they put in. Um, Luke will continue to be our head coach. Uh, the team finished strong uh, down the stretch. Um, obviously did not ultimately uh, reach our goal, but um, he has the support of our players. Uh, we have a great working relationship. And um, while I, we, we both acknowledge that we, uh, we have to become better in many areas, um, we built that trust and um, we need the stability um, in this organization to, uh, to ultimately take that, that next step. On the season, um, we're disappointed. Um, fan base deserves better, deserves the playoffs. Uh, we feel the frustration. Um, we saw some good stretches, but ultimately we were too inconsistent and we need to find more consistency. Uh, defensively goes without saying has to be much improved. Um, Luke and I recognize that we're going to work together to improve that offensively. Uh, we made a jump, but I think this team can, can be a top five offense consistently. So we'll look for another jump on that end as well. Um, we're going to do everything in our power, uh, to be aggressive and improve the team and, and ultimately, uh, get back to the playoffs. So with that, I'll take questions. All right, we will start with James Hamm. Yeah, Monty, what, what went into the decision to, to bring Luke back? And just how difficult was that decision for you, uh, knowing that this is your first year on the job and, you know, you kind of inherited him as a head coach? Yeah, we, um, you know, look, Luke, Luke um, there was a lot of positive this year. Uh, certainly not enough. Um, we understand that, but you know, Luke and I talk every day. We have a great working relationship. He's got the support of the players. Um, we found some success, uh, especially late in the season, um, to get back into the play in race. Um, and ultimately, I felt that we could build on that and that he's the coach who's going to get us back uh, to the playoffs. Sean Cunningham. Oh, James, you want to go back? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead and follow up. Uh, is there something that, that stands out to you? I mean, we hear it all the time that a GM is going to want his guy. And uh, is, is it possible that Luke is going to become your guy? I mean, clearly he's going to be your guy for a second season, but really like he can become that, that guy that you depend on and can be a partner with you long-term. Yeah, like I said, Luke, Luke, um, you know, Luke and I came in from day one and um, and forged, I think, a really great working relationship. And and our guy is going to be the guy that gets us back to the playoffs. And and I think Luke is is going to be that guy. Sean Cunningham. Hey, Monty, um, just from the expectations that maybe you had when you first took the job, um, I guess I don't know if there's a way to a barometer on it, but just how far short did this season come from meeting some of maybe some of those expectations early on? Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, kind of coming in, you know, one, one big goal of ours was to compete every night. Um, you know, I think we did, we took a step in that direction, but ultimately the inconsistency was, was still there too much to reach our goal. Um, we saw a lot of good, but, but, you know, ultimately we need to be more consistent uh, with that effort. Uh, with our defense, with all those things um, to uh, to get where we want to go. And then when you kind of look at just your challenge ahead of trying to help, you know, Luke establish uh, a winning culture and get, like you said, get him back to the playoffs, how much did the end of the season run maybe change initially your mindset going into this offseason, some of the decisions you have to make? Did that – did you take much from that run that maybe ultimately – impacts your decisions later on that may have been different from the maybe first part of the season? Yeah, it was, um, you know, it, it was certainly a, a better stretch towards the end. And, and um, you know, with injuries, it was some different players 
doing that. It was good to see, um, you know, some of our, um, some of our new additions help us there. Um, obviously early in the year was a different set of players. Um, but you know, ultimately we think, uh, the group that we have has the talent, um, and we'll continue to try to add to it. So Tony Harvey. Hey Monty, how you doing? Um, uh, I'm not trying to editorialize this or anything because I've been here for the last 20 years and the 15 years that they this team that has not made the playoffs. So when I hear a GM say he is disappointed, I haven't heard that in the last decade and a half. So I just want to you know, let you know how significant that is. You probably are the first that I heard say that in a long time. But anyway, uh, the trade that you made with the three, with uh, Mo, DeLon, and Terrence was also significant, uh, which – I know myself, I didn't really see coming in as far as their defensive prowess, uh, their defensive skills. And I know that's probably was something that you had in the back of your mind when you made that decision to bring that in. Could you explain that? And, and, and the fact that maybe, you know, if all three of them come back, that that can be the core and the definition of this team going forward. Can you explain your thoughts process going in those particular three coming in and helping on the defensive end? Yeah, we certainly going into the deadline, we targeted defense uh, players who could help us um, guard the ball on the perimeter, give us length, give us some some really tenacity on that end. Um, and I think we did see improvement in the second half, especially towards the end. Uh, the last two or three weeks of the year, we were um, a, a significantly improved defense. I think those three guys were were certainly a big part of that. And, and is that – something that you're trying to establish going forward in the 2021-2022 season with this squad. Absolutely. Yeah. No, like I said, we need to, uh, we need to be significantly better on defense. Um, you know, those three guys, I think exemplified um, a lot of what we'll try to do on that end and we'll continue to look for other, other players um, and continue to improve our, our current uh, players as well to, uh, to get our defense where it needs to be. So, so we can get back to the postseason. Jason Jones. Hey, Monty. Just as you, as you look at this uh, off season and trying to get the team back into the playoffs, how are you going to prioritize uh, your roster additions? Do you look to maybe go for a veteran instead of going through the draft? Have you really given that uh, part of the process a lot of thought at this point? Uh, not, not in detail, um, but, you know, we, we continue, you know, we'll, we'll be aggressive, whether it's, you know, really the three avenues, right? Draft, free agency, trade. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, be aggressive and, and smart and looking for, um, you know, big or small ways that we can upgrade the team there. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think we can cut any one of those off. We need all three uh, at our disposal as we try to, um, you know, improve this and, and get to where we got to go. And no, last offseason was a truncated one for everyone. You're also new on the job. Just how different are you and how more prepared do you feel going into this one, knowing the players, knowing the coach, and kind of knowing the landscape of what you got to do to improve the team? Yeah, cer certainly um, last year coming in, short offseason was, was a bit crazy. Uh, ultimately, we did feel uh, prepared, but um, it, it will be nice to have a, a little more normal uh, timeline this offseason um, for our staff. Um, you know, for for the market to take shape and all that stuff. And um, so we're definitely looking forward to it. We're excited. Marshall Harris. Hey, Monty. Uh, it being your first, uh, I guess, uh, full off season on, on the job. Uh, I'm just curious, really, in terms of year one for you, season one, what have you learned maybe about this job and your role and this organization that's going to help prepare you better for this off season than maybe the last one or in, in year two, I should say. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly new coming in, but, but having going through a year and um, you know, seeing and hearing and feeling the, the, the fans excitement, passion, but also frustration. Um, you know, we share that, um, you know, ultimately that's our goal. Get back to the playoffs, stay there, have success. Um, and we're going to, you know, be aggressive and looking for ways to do that. 
you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, prioritizing things this offseason. I'm just curious as to your approach with, with the players that you do have on the roster who are either restricted or unrestricted free agents. And how do you weigh that versus looking outside and bringing people in, given that you, you came off, as you described it, a disappointing season, not reaching your goal and, and measuring, you know, how valuable a guy is maybe on your team right now, whether it's Rashawn Holmes or someone else versus what you can go outside and get. Yeah, no, we, uh, we really like, um, what, what those guys brought to us this year. Uh, you mentioned Rashawn, you know, we love Rashawn, uh, had a, had a career year integral part of our team. And, um, so I won't go into all our details, but certainly, uh, what he brought, what, what some of the other guys brought, um, you know, especially down the stretch was, was instrumental and, uh, we'll continue to, to look to them and others to, to, um, you know, get us back where we got to go. Crystal Saltos. Hello, Mr. McNair. First of all, thank you for your time. I would like to ask you, speaking about the second half of the season, how many steps in the right direction do you feel that you made as a team? And what would you like to maintain from that uh, level? Yeah, I, um, like I mentioned, I think our, our defensive improvement in the second half of the year is, is something that we're going to point to. Um, it's still not enough. We got to be even better than that. But it was good to see um, some improvement on that end. Um, and ultimately, I, I, you know, we didn't um, we never want to have these long losing streaks, but to be able to come out of one after the deadline uh, mm -hmm. and make a run, make a push for the play in, um, you know, we ultimately fell short. Um, but that's something that we'll look to build on as well. And uh, you mentioned the, fr the, the frustration uh, about your team and the end of the season. How important for you is to turn that frustration into a motivation for the next season? Yeah, that's what we got to do. That's what the players have to do. That's what our coaching staff has to do. That's what uh, our front office staff has to do is, um, you know, like I said, we, we feel and hear and see the frustration of the fans here, uh, but we also see the passion and, and all we're trying to do is unlock that uh, and, and really turn it into the excitement um, that, that this city's ready to explode with. Jason Anderson. <clears throat> Hi, Monty. Thanks for your time today, sir. Um, you know, you've touched on this quite a bit already, but but your defensive rating this season was 30th. Uh, those last 13 games, uh, it was ninth. Um, you did that with a lot of backups and trade deadline acquisitions. And I wonder if that raises concerns or what it says about the core that this organization has been building around that, that you know, given even more time and togetherness, they haven't been able to put that together. But this collection of guys at the end of the season gets thrown together and, and is able to play good defense. What do you make of that? No, I think we have the, um, we have the talent up and down the roster to be a significantly better defense. Um, you know, guy, guys who have been on the team the whole year or, or since the deadline um, or, or even past the deadline. But um, I think all our guys in talking with them acknowledge we have to be better on that end In talking with Luke, we acknowledge we have to get better on that end. And um, ultimately it's up to us to do that. But I think the talent is there um, to, on the defensive end um, to have a better showing. Okay. Um, and then, you know, to follow up on the question about Luke, there's, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the money he's owed over the next couple of years. And um, every organization has dealt with big losses. Um, it, did you, have the freedom and then did was this a choice or, or was it a money decision um, or, or were you able to make a basketball decision that you wanted to bring Luke back? Yeah, no, I, I understand that that that's kind of out there, but I've been given, given um, every resource I need uh, to get this team back to the playoffs. And, um, and this was a basketball decision. Matt George. Hi, Monty. I think you might have spoken about this earlier in the season. I was hoping for a bit of clarification. Um, there were many reports and many were under the impression that this season was initially intended to be like a gap year. And then the plan might have changed or adapted around the play in push and or, or around the deadline. Is that accurate? Did the plan change or was the plan all along? No, we're, we're trying to make the postseason no matter what. Yeah, I um, I don't know where the uh, the really the gap year term originated. It wasn't with us, but um, yeah, we we wanted to use this year like any year uh, to continue to build on the core, the foundation that's here, uh, build some winning habits. We think we did some of that. Certainly not enough. And um, this off season and next year, uh, we'll continue to do that and and be aggressive uh, in that way. But um, 
but no, I don't know where the, where the gap year term came from, um, you know, but that, that's our goal. Okay, go to uh, Deuce. Hey, Monty, you know, you mentioned you believe Luke can be the guy that helps get you guys back to the postseason. Um, what are the attributes that you see with him as a head coach that makes you believe that and makes you confident that he can help get you there? Yeah, Deuce, you got a great setup there, man. You got the, the whole mic and everything. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> now, Luke, um, you know, I think the, Luke's strong points is um, his relationships with our players. Uh, he's got support from all of them. Um, you know, our offense took a jump this year. We have a great working relationship. He's open-minded. And um, we also acknowledge together um, where we fell short this year and where, where we have to get better. And we're already working together on, on how to shore those things up and, and ultimately get, get back there. I, th I think, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to doing that. Good news. Okay. Go back to Sean Cunningham. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Monty, I wanted to ask, you were asked about the core a minute ago and as it pertains to defense, and I was just wondering how far away do you feel this is? Do you feel like you – and you've talked about wanting to keep flexibility and, and things of that nature, but do you feel like it's maybe a tweak here or there? Are you, do you, are you satisfied with the core that you have, or do you feel that you even have a core yet? Yeah, Sean, I think, um, you know, our expectation is to – like I said, compete every night and win. That's the expectation on a nightly basis. And ultimately we need to put enough wins together um, that we're in the postseason. But um, I think there's talent on this roster. We'll continue to look for ways to, to add to it. But, um, you know, I think we saw plenty of, of signs this year that we can compete at the level needed. We just need to be more consistent. Leo Bees. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, perfect. Uh, hey, Monty, how are you? Uh, so I'm sure it was difficult to see your team go through two nine-game losing streaks. Did you ever consider moving in a different direction from Luke when that second losing streak happened? Yeah, we, um, it, it was a frustrating time during those losing streaks. I think um, coming out of losing streaks uh, in the way we did uh, was really good to see. We just We, we both acknowledged that we can't have – nine game losing streaks and expect to make the pl playoffs again. So that goes back to the consistency. Um, and uh, we continue to work together to, to uh, head those off and um, have more of the uh, seven out of nine winning streaks and, and things of that ilk as we, um, you know, really look for a playoff push. Go back to Jason Jones. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Jason Jones for now. Sorry. Yeah, Monty. I uh, just uh, ask about Marvin. He, you know, he's had a uh, he had some good signs this season, but he had the injuries. Uh, the injury pop up again. First, just what went behind the decision to allow him to be away from the team while he recovered? And just secondly, what did you think about how he came back after that time? Yeah, we uh, we always work with our our players to have a plan in place. Um, that was the plan we agreed to with Marvin. We were in constant communication, and um, he worked really hard to uh, to get back and was really pleased to see uh, not just his progress before the injury, but to come back and have, uh, you know, a, a few huge games down the stretch uh, to get us back into contention a little bit. Um, so he's got a bright future ahead. Um, really excited for, for what we've seen from Marvin. All right, a few more. Go back to Tony Harvey. So, yeah, Monty. So, uh, you, know, you know, the NCAA was a pretty wild season, uh, and there's a lot of promising talent out there. Just want to uh, get your thoughts of uh, this year's uh, draft class. You knocked it out the park with uh, Tyrese Halliburton. I have to say that myself. And, and get your thoughts on him as well. But just want to see what, what's going to be the uh, draft process and, and what should the local media expect? Yeah, we're, uh, we're certainly starting and, and have already began uh, throughout the college season. Um, seems like a deep draft um, and we're excited to, you know, use that pick to, to be aggressive and, and figure out a way to, uh, to add another quality player uh, to this team. So uh, we're excited from what we see in the draft so far. Marshall Harris. 
Monty, a moment ago, uh, we heard you talking about consistency, and really that's been kind of a theme, the lack thereof all season long. We heard uh, Harrison Barnes speak in depth about, you know, no more my bads. I guess accountability is a big thing. I'm just curious as to, in your conversations, whether it's Luke, the players and their exit interviews, uh, do you feel like the, the accountability has been there? Um, obviously, the players are saying it, it, it's not at the level it needs to be. It hasn't. But what can you do in your position uh, and on down to make sure that that's there next season, uh, whether it's losing streaks or just individual performances on a, a day-to-day basis? W- what, what's your, uh, I guess, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, there's there's certainly a personal, personal accountability that, that we all need to um, – to have, but it certainly starts at the top as well with myself, uh, with Luke and, uh, holding our staffs, our, uh, the players, um, everybody accountable to the standards that we're trying to set here. Um, and like I said, we, we did some of that, but it wasn't enough this year. So, uh, certainly needs to get better. All right. Two more, Matt George. Monty, when we chatted with you at the, uh, or, your first press conference, you talked a lot about wanting to maintain flexibility and and put yourself in a position to make aggressive moves. Is that still the plan going into this summer? Is that still as important as you expressed then or have things changed with, I guess, just a full season of context? Yeah. um, Same, same position. Um, You know, we, we, uh, we have, I think a lot of flexibility and optionality um, to continue to look for moves big or small. Uh, to continue to push this thing in the right direction. So, um, yeah, we're excited for, for the off season and um, the plan is the same. All right, last one, Sean Cunningham. Yeah, sorry, Monty. I just wanted to follow up on a previous question. I was hoping, can you shed some light a little bit on just maybe the decision why Marvin was uh, went home and just kind of what the motivation was behind that? Yeah, I don't want to get into those details. Just, just, um, just to say that uh, we worked with Marvin and his his uh, his team, his his agent, uh, for a plan that worked for him, and that's what we came up with. Um, and we're excited to see um, how he came back strong um, and um, you know really finished out uh, the season um, with some big games. That was fun to see. Um, so yeah, we're we're looking for more of that in the future. Tony is the last one. Yeah, I, I was trying to get this in the last question, though, Monty, if you don't mind. Talk about uh, Tyrese, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, the uh, season, rookie season there, and it looked like he's definitely going to get stronger and better and more effective for this organization. Yeah, we were, um, you know, really excited with, with Tyrese's uh, rookie season, uh, of course, uh, but also in talking with him, he's hungry to, to get even better, get stronger, um, improve on offense, improve on defense, and – um, you know, but, but what he's brought to this team already, um, is fantastic. And, uh, we're looking forward to even more of that in the future. Okay. All right, everyone. I just want to say thank you to all of you. I know it's been a tough year doing zooms, uh, not being able to be in the building, all that stuff. Um, you know, thank you guys and, and hope to see you all in person soon. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks guys. Thanks,